Have you ever played Picture Dictation? It is a fun activity or game for children and adults. We share a short description of it in our toolbox for multilingual families. What you need is a piece of paper and a pen or a tablet with the drawing function. You can do this activity in small or big groups. I do it in my intercultural communication trainings and the maximum of people I played this were 56 online, so no excuse for those who are not physically present. How does it work? Now, one player describes an easy to draw picture to the other players and they draw it. I give you an example of a skeleton description, which means I only describe the essential things, so not colors, exact sizes, etc. I read it out now a bit faster than I would if people were to draw what I say, so please keep that in mind. In the middle of the picture is a big house. The house has a door and five windows. On the roof of the house there is a chimney. On the top right hand side of the picture is a hill with a castle on the top. On the top left hand side of the picture is a sun. In front of the hill there is a river that runs between the hill and the house and ends at the bottom right of the picture. There is a long grass on the right side of the river or on its river bank. Three ducks are swimming on the river. On the left hand side of the house are two apple trees. Under the sun you can see four birds flying. Now this is what the picture looked like that I had in mind. Now during this game players might ask things like where in the bottom corner or just underneath or is the tree bigger than the house or smaller. So please remind the players that you only give that sentence about a detail on the picture but won't give more information about it. In my description of the picture you may have noticed that I didn't use many adjectives like uh, I used big and I used numerals like 2, 3, 4 and 5 but no colors. So the drawing will vary as everyone has different ways to understand and arrange also all the elements, all the items that I mentioned on the page. Now you can of course adapt the picture to any level of comprehension and fluency in the language. For the youngest ones, for example, you keep it simple and make sure they know what you are describing. So this means that if they don't know yet how a helicopter looks like, you won't ask them to draw one. On the other hand, if the child knows, for example, what the helicopter looks like, but his or her fine motor skills are still developing, you will not judge the picture, but encourage the attempt and recognize the effort. Time is not a determining factor in this game or activity. Please allow players to complete every single detail you mention before proceeding to describe the next one. With some players, it might be an incentive to draw as fast as they can. That's totally up to you to decide what engages your players. When everyone has finished the drawing, you can compare the pictures and discuss the shapes, the position and the details. As I mentioned, this also works if you meet online. Ask everyone to show the completed picture in the camera, make a screenshot and share it with the group and discuss it. As I said, it is not a competition and it's not about judging each other's drawing skills. Now you can move on to the next picture or ask one of the other players to choose a picture to describe. If you don't have pictures at hand, you can also use objects but these need to be hidden for those who need to draw them or you need to make sure the other players don't know what you're describing so don't stare at the object that would make it way too obvious so these can be cushions this can be um, a sofa tables chairs a book whatever you see or you have in the room with you let me share a few variations of this game you can make it more complicated by not naming the object or picture itself and just ask the other players to, for example, draw a circle and then draw two arrows 
of different lengths who start from the middle of the circle and point at a place on the circle. This is a very easy one, right? So you might have guessed that it's about drawing a clock or a watch. Now for this same object, you can also ask to draw, for example, a circle and divide the circle into 12 equal parts starting from the middle of the circle. So some will think it's a cake or maybe it's a wheel or again, it could be a watch or a clock. If you play this game in an additional language or language the players are not that fluent in yet, you may have to help with prepositions and indications like on the top of or uh, in the top or bottom right or left hand corner, in front, behind, etc. So it's helpful if you have a list of prepositions where they can look up uh, the different words and understand what you mean. You can also draw pictures or show pictures of the things, the house, the hill, the clouds, whatever it is, of what appears in the picture and they will need then to put them on the right place on the paper. So if the players don't know the name of all the objects or, or items yet in the target language, it is a really fun and entertaining way to memorize new words. You can also add color to the pictures, for example, the blue car, there were eight red apples on the tree or uh, the orange leaves laying on the ground or asked to color the door of the house yellow or even asked to label the objects by writing the name of the object underneath, for example, house and river, riverbank, etc. This is also a nice way to introduce new words to those who are still learning the language and you combine here the game with a spelling exercise, for example. You can also combine it with the telephone game. So one player, for example, describes a picture to one player only, who draws it and then explains his or her drawing to the next player and so on. And at the end, you compare all the drawings. It's a lot of fun to compare what comes out of this. If played this way, it's better to choose only one item to draw, otherwise it will take too long for the other players to wait for their turn. What do you get out of this game? Well, a part of connecting with your children, your partner, your friends, extended family in a fun and entertaining way, it is a very effective game about communication, about how we communicate things that we often assume that we mention details or explain things in a way that can't be interpreted differently, but it can. So it makes us more aware of our choice of words. It helps us to see things from other perspectives and it helps us also to adjust our pace to the other person and generally gives us the opportunity to put ourselves in the shoes of the person who is drawing. These are only a few ways to play this game. Please let me know how you play it and how you find it in the comments here below. And if you like this activity and this video, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I publish a new video.